In 1988, the United Nations created a special international group, which included hundreds of experts from a dozen different countries. Their main task was to study climate change, more specifically the infamous global warming. Over the last 30 years, their work has become more and more relevant, even for ordinary people who have noticed weather changes in their regions, which include abnormal heat, frequent showers, or forest fires, floods, droughts, and hurricanes. Once every seven years, this research squad publishes global reports on the condition of our Mother Earth. In it, they not only tackle its current state, but also the past. Technological progress provides new capabilities to model complex objects, even as enormous as the planet Earth. Every year it becomes clearer and clearer what nature was like hundreds of years ago, how quickly it changes nowadays, and what it might look like in the future. And it also becomes apparent who will be responsible for creating hell on Earth, and how much of our carbon budget there is left to spend. In August of 2021, seven years since the last report, the first part of the new paper, entitled The Physical Science Basis, consisting of 4,000 pages, was published. 234 authors from 66 countries analyzed more than 14,000 works. Based on that research, they created complex mathematical models to answer the following question. Where we are now, and how much time we have left. When you compare any characteristics or objects, be it your own weight or a friend's new car, it is always important to establish a point of reference. And while everything is pretty clear about being overweight or envious, in our case the object of study is a little more complicated. It is global warming. To begin with, we need to define what it is and whether it exists at all, which is tricky since we cannot touch nor see it. Global warming is an increase in temperature across planet Earth. And the main question is how significant that increase is and in relation to what. So, the report takes the so-called pre-industrial period as a starting point. Of course, no one can name the exact date when it began, so they used the 1850 to 1900 period as a baseline and looked at how the temperature has been rising to the present day. The researchers found out that steady warming began to occur somewhere in 1950, that is, only 70 years ago, and by now the Earth has warmed up by 1.1 degrees Celsius. Here you can see two graphs. The first one is the results of manual temperature measurements for this period, and the second one demonstrates the values from the mathematical model created by experts. As you can see, the model is impressive in its accuracy. But the fact that we now have the highest temperature in 170 years probably isn't all that impressive. The report also shows a model of temperature changes from the birth of Christ, and that change looks more significant. For 1,900 years, nature has been in relative calm, and then it suddenly started warming up. Moreover, we have broken the temperature record for the last 100,000 years. The report compares current data to what was happening 6,500 years ago. During the Holocene epoch, the temperature of the Earth increased by 1 degree, and now we are primed to break the 125,000 years record. 1 degree might seem small to an ordinary Joe. After all, something like 15 degrees would indeed make an obvious difference, but not everything can be assessed from our own experience. I believe that the 100,000-year records and the UN's attention to this topic did not arise out of nothing, and we are just starting to unravel the details of impending catastrophe. Wait, why are we in such a hurry? We still got a lot of time, don't we? And besides, who is to blame for all these records? Well, there is no way it is humanity. After all, you all saw volcanoes and how huge and hot they are. 
There's lava flowing all over the place, and compared to that, people are tiny little things. Plus, experts on the internet cannot be wrong. Well, I don't know what models those so-called experts use, but the authors of the report have a different opinion. Seven years ago, in the fifth report, they wrote, Human influence on the climate system is clear, and recent anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases are the highest in history. Recent climate changes have had widespread impacts on human and natural systems. Seven years later, the conclusions became more adamant. It is unequivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, ocean and land. Widespread and rapid changes in the atmosphere, ocean, cryosphere and biosphere have occurred. By the way, remember the graph showing how temperature changed since the beginning of industrialization? Scientists have also modelled how global warming would have played out without people, using only the sun and those giant volcanoes as affecting factors. As you can see, it wouldn't happen at all. The influence of natural factors is negligible. Well, this is according to scientists, of course. So, it turns out that by now, we, humans, have heated our Earth up by 1.1 degrees, and this already feels quite unpleasant as it causes more frequent heat waves. A heat wave is not just a hot day. A heat wave is registered when the temperature in a particular region stays close to the maximum for five days or more. So, it is a rather noticeable period both for an ordinary person turning into a sweaty sausage even at night and for city services, because infrastructure may also be compromised. For example, this is what happened when the heat wave hit the USA and Canada a couple of months ago. There were recorded cases of cables melting and swelling of the asphalt. Well, at least the children who fried eggs on the pavement were happy. Apart from the obvious things, it turns out that sometimes the heat can be stated as a cause of death. Also, as you have already guessed, during heat waves, the likelihood of forest fires increases, and unfortunately, we've been drowning in a stream of such news lately. Just recently, there were fires in the USA, Greece, Yakutia, Italy, and Turkey. And just for example, if you look at the temperature in Antalya in July, then on average, the high temperature is considered to be about 35 degrees Celsius. But in reality, the temperature was much higher than the usual heat for about 20 days. Or take Italy, when the weather station on Sicily recorded a record temperature for the region of 48.8 degrees on August the 11th. The next day, fires broke out in the area. Obviously, not all of those cases are caused by global warming. There is also a human factor, like somebody dropping a lit match in the forest. But still, the increased temperatures leads to a higher probability of a negative outcome. And I don't believe setting forests on fire to mask illegal logging to be a global phenomenon. In Turkey, there were 270 fires in 53 provinces. So, what was I talking about? Oh right, heat waves. The UN study also raised the question of how often these waves will be occurring in the future. The biggest heat waves that come every 50 years were taken as the baseline. So, right now, after the planet has heated up by one degree, the period between such waves has shortened from 50 years to 10. On top of that, the temperature of the waves also increased. And here comes the cherry on top. The average temperature can still rise higher, and when it hits plus 4 degrees, it will create hell on Earth, with major heat waves occurring every year. And the same principle works for other disasters, such as floods and droughts. The higher the average temperature on Earth, the more heat waves, floods and drought we are going to witness. Wow! Add to all this the evolution of viruses, population growth, increasing inequality in income and education, and you'll see what a great future awaits us.
but the key question is, how much time do we have left? I hope that you now feel a little more serious about a one degree increase in Earth temperature. Meanwhile, the scientists have made some predictions. However, their estimates depend not on a specific time frame, but on carbon dioxide emissions, aka CO2. You see, over the past 200 years, humans have been the cause of about 2.4 trillion tons of carbon dioxide entering the atmosphere. Since it is impossible to draw super accurate figures, at least for now, scientists work with a margin of error of about 10%. By now, we have warmed up the Earth by 1.1 degrees, and the next target mark is 1.5 degrees. And the question is, when will we surpass it? Here, scientists introduce a concept of the carbon budget. It is the amount of CO2 that must be emitted into the atmosphere to reach a specific target. So, to heat up the Earth by 1.5 degrees, we will need to release, drum roll, 400 billion tons of carbon dioxide. Considering that every year we emit 40 billion tons, it's not rocket science to calculate that we have 10 years left before reaching new climatic conditions. As you can see, the state of our future world will be determined exclusively by the amount of emitted CO2 and our ability to remove it from the atmosphere. The logic here is simple and straightforward. More emissions, more temperature, more heating, more heat waves, floods and droughts, which lead to changes of landscape, glaciers, ocean level, its pH balance, and much more. This is our first video about ecology, so if you want to learn more about what is happening with our mother nature, write it down in the comments. You know that we read it all. And if we see your interest, we'll make more videos like this. And scientists, of course, have come up with five scenarios which are based on temperature changes. They vary from extremely optimistic to not so much. The funny thing is that all of them imply that we will reach the first milestone of 1.5 degrees. Here you can see these temperature changes. The most optimistic scenario will play out if the entire planet sees zero carbon emissions by 2030. In this case, somewhere in the 2040s, the planet will begin to cool down, thus postponing the events shown in the movie The Day After Tomorrow. And in the worst-case scenario that implies humanity carries on not caring about the planet, the Earth will warm up by 4 degrees by 2080. And here come the yearly heat waves, floods, droughts, and all that jazz. Well, what can I say? I would like to believe that all these hundreds of scientists from 60 countries were bribed by adherents of green energy, and I wish they were lying. But in some regions, it is enough to look out of the window to realize that something is wrong with nature. Well, folks, let's wait and see. Keep track of your budgets and temperatures, and hit the bell to get notified about our new videos. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'm The Researcher. Thank you.